Hey, folks, just a friendly reminder that all shows on the Madness Comic Network are produced by their individual hosts and in no way reflect the opinions of the network as a whole. The statements in the following broadcast are not necessarily the opinions of the Madness Comic Network, its staff, sponsors, or contributors. This show is rated TVMA, as are all of them and all those other letters. Viewer discretion is highly advised, and, you know, just do what Doc says. Read that again. Peace, everybody. Flip City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at the. I mean, I remember when you guys, it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But, Dan, they have just, I mean, they just really stepping it up. And look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett. Genuinely cutting. Um... But also funny and obviously just chaotic and and very fun. I love Flip City. It has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium. Mr. Chris, what up? Also, Chris Kale from Rock and Roll Band Five Finger Death Punch. Heard that you're about to launch your newest board game, Gods of Metal, where you take on the persona of different metal musicians to stop the overlords and their demons from taking over reality. I think I know a metal musician that can help you fight those overlords and those demons. That is me, Chris Kale. So, shout out to you, Chris. Shout out to all of the Laughing Rogue crew. And shout out to Gods of Metal. Uh, I will be in there taking over reality from the demons and the overlords. Chris Kale. Just like it says there on my hat, in case I forget. I do play bass. <laughs> An ancient darkness is breaking through into our reality. The overlords are coming. Their demons united, they'll stop at nothing to tear our world to shreds. And the only thing that can stop them is the power of metal. You have been chosen by the gods of metal to lead this crusade of finger-shredding fury. You must write the sick riffs, craft the awesome lyrics, find unholy rhythms, and set the heads banging. Show the overlords that their darkness is nothing compared to yours. Gods of Metal is a co-op deck building game for one to four players. You and your bandmates must work to create the most powerful band in human history. Find mystical instruments of legend, outlandish costumes to improve your powers, and recruit mascots to help you battle the overlords. Find the power of pure decibels and use them to destroy your enemies by crafting songs that will literally blow their minds. Form a band. Save the world. Gods of Metal. Now on Kickstarter. Glamorized and embraced by Hollywood, feared in the underworld, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel was one of the most powerful men in America. 
he was also one of the most hated. The man who gave birth to Las Vegas was gunned down in the luxurious home of his glamorous lover. Almost 80 years later, his murder remains unsolved. Who killed Bugsy? for you because you are getting to watch right now, right this moment, out of all the things we're going to be doing, you're getting to enjoy and revel in the Madness Comic Network, and that is awesome. Thank you for being here. Trouble if the boss shows up? Oh no, it's the boss here. <laughs> hey, wait, I'm the boss. <laughs> Olay! Stick him up, please. Smoke if you wish. Come on! Damn, that hurts, doesn't it? You know what's up. If you don't, you should. You should know what's up. It's Sunday, it's 1 p.m. Eastern, and it's time for the Madness Open Draw Stream. And I just want to make a couple of quick statement announcements, whatever you want to call it, before I bring people in. Uh, tonight, tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, we will be doing the countdown for Zen Intergalactic Ninja, Zen the Bounty Hunter, he is an intergalactic ninja, also hanging out with Nira X. Bill Moss is going to be here. Steve Stern is going to be here. We're going to be counting down the last hour of that. But don't wait till then. Go back it now. You see what I'm saying? You ain't got a lot of time left. That one ends tonight. So Zen, Intergalactic Ninja, Zen, The Bounty Hunter Wars. I can't remember what it is. I think it's Bounty Hunter Wars. Yeah, that's good. All right. But you know what I'm saying. Go check that stuff out. Look. We got this show. We got the show offs today. We got some silver line action tonight. It's all action on the Madness Comic Network. And, you yeah, know, just be here. It's the best thing you can do is just be here like this. So just sit right down, relax, open your ears real wide and say, give it to me straight, doctor. I can take it.
the doctor is sort of in. What's up, everybody? <laughs> what does sort of in mean? What does that mean exactly? I, I'm not on camera. Well, neither am I. And, and this is why. But look, you still get me. I'm just holding up Cabo and Stan. Right? <laughs> um, I put that up there to remind me that you can't drink for another month. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, not like I'm a big drinker anyway, but every now and then I like to do some shots, you know. I mean, right. Uh, but I can't. And while I can't, there's a bottle of Cabo up there in the cupboard. God damn it. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard on me. But we have another guest in the backstage. A regular has returned. He's been gone for a little bit. But he's I'm glad to see him back. It's Jay Lee. What's up, James? How you doing? Hey, hey. hey guys. What's going on, man? What's up, James? Been missing you, bro. Yeah, I had two weeks where I had, you know, lost my dog and I and I got sick. So I'm sorry about that, man. Yeah. Eleven almost eleven years I had him and uh, he had a stroke, so Mm -mm. And when, yeah. the dog, when a dog has a stroke, there's nothing you can do. Not a thing. Really is. I, I think that's how we lost Zeus. I think he had a stroke. He was fine one minute and gone the next. Uh, yeah. that's, that's basically what happened with him, except his basically shut half his, his entire back end off. And he, got, he was dragging his feet and crying and everything like that. And, he got him to the vet and the vet came out saying there's nothing they can do for him. So nah, it's just tragic, man. I'm sorry. Yep. It does suck. And it, and and that's the thing. We attach ourselves to pets knowing that they're gonna pass before we do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think this last one I'm just gonna time, outlast right? me. Until you're old, okay. Ninety percent of the time. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure this one's gonna outlive me. Terry, I don't draw anyway, and Doc Stream is right. Doc Screen is right there. We just ain't pulled it up yet. Don't rush the show. The show's two hours. We'll get to it. <laughs> we, 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 we's talking. It's the beginning of the show. And as much as Rex inquires, all he's got to do is ask me. I'll tell him how I'm doing. <laughs> if he's asking on a stream, I'm not watching. How am I going to? <laughs> Excuse me. Like, send me an invite, send, send me something to watch the show, and then ask me questions. And I'm more than happy to join you and ask, answer questions. But you know, Rocky is upstairs. I'm sure you'll hear him at some point. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Our animals do mean more to us than some real people. This is true. Uh, than most real people, if you want to get down and be honest about it. I take Rocky over about 90% of the people I've met in my life. Um, so <laughs> Zeus, I take over about 95% of the people I let, met in my life. So, yeah, our animals mean a lot to us. And, and it sucks when we lose them, but we attach ourselves to beings that we know have much shorter lifespans than we do. And... There's people, you know, after you lose an animal, sometimes you're like, man, I'm never going to get another dog. And then you realize that's not why you had the dog. And you get another dog. You see what I'm saying? No, not all the time. You get really attached to your dog and you're like, I just don't think I'm going to get another one. Yeah, well, that's how it starts. But then you remember why you had a dog. It was no, I, I'm saying I, on, this, on this one, I don't know if I'm going to do another one or not. I feel you, man. I get that. That's what I'm saying. Everybody feels that in the beginning when they first lose them. Don't even, yeah, lose but, them. You, know, you never know how you're going to feel in about six months or a year. I mean, I can't imagine, even if I could find another big husky, a big, beautiful husky like Zeus, it ain't going to be Zeus. But it's going to have a personality of its own that I'm going to come to love. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah. We don't replace him. We replace the hole that's left behind. That's what we do. <coughs> that's what we do. You know. 16-year-old um, cat. Holy crap. Was well, she was a stray when you took her in, so you weren't really sure how old she was when you took her in, or was she a kitten? 
What's up, Levi? Oh, that's somebody. I, um, the, the link is pinned up there, Levi, if you want to join us. I don't think I saw you on my list to send it to. You. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like it's not it, when you think about it as replacing them, then no, because you can't. No, I'm not talking, thinking about replacing them. No, I'm Susan saying, just said that. It, Susan just said that in the chat. She said, "I won't ever try to replace this one when his time comes," and that's that's the difference. You don't think about replacing the pet. The pet already has that spot in your heart. You're not going to replace that pet, but you might have to refill that void that lost pet leaves. We got somebody else in the backstage, people. Where's that? Where is it? Where is it? I can't ever find them. There's too many things back here. Where's Stephen Beach? I don't know. It's, I don't see it. I'm not even looking at the screen, bro. I can't help you. I'm talking about the Stephen B intro. It's, I, not, I, here. I, I, it's I, not in the... It's not I, here. My answer is the same. I don't know. You're the one that loads these things. It's you made it. Didn't you load one in the drawstring for Stephen B? It's almost like you don't have access to StreamYard. I don't have the, the clip you loaded for him, dude. It's not in my computer. It's in yours. It's in all the other streams. You can just download it. I can't download it. I don't have it. You can't pull stuff out of StreamYard, dude. You can't download stuff out of StreamYard. Not the clip. I mean, what you want me to do? Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen B. Load it. What's up? I don't have it, Pops. I just switched computers. I lost a lot of stuff. What's going on, Stephen? Are you home yet? Yeah, I'm home. Well, welcome back from your journey across the seas. Did you have a good time? It worked. Yep, it worked. And that uh, looks better. Okay, I'll just shut up now. <laughs> Did you have a good trip, Stephen? Yeah, it was a good trip. The, the main thing is, did you have a good time, really? I mean, if you're out there, you had a blast, then she, go yeah. do it again. <clears throat> it was fun, and I just dropped the tab. And what happened? I dropped this. For this. Oh, hell. He, 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 I guess that's a refill for the pen or something. No, it's the uh, pen, the uh, cap for the pen. Oh, okay. Because it looked a whole lot like, you know, other stuff. <laughs> we get containers that look like that with stuff in them, you know? <laughs> Rerolls come in containers that look just like that. Where'd he go? What have you done? Where did he go? What have you done? Where is Q? Q, where are you? Where is Q? <sighs> but yeah, Levi, if you wanted to join us, I think that link's up there somewhere. You can find it. You're more than welcome to join us, my friend. Come hang, Levi. Yeah. Anybody who wants to draw, look, if we can get 10 people in here, then I get to leave because I don't draw. So, by all means, come on in. I had to completely reverse the lighting on this face. That's why I'm digitally reworking it. I had the light source completely backwards. <clears throat> Hate it when that happens. That's not good. Yeah, the fortunate thing is, if you're working digitally, you can fix it. Link is pinned to the top of the chat. Pin, pinned to the top of the chat. That's where it is, Christian. It's right there at the top. Just scroll up. You'll find it. Right there. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful weekend, a restful, restful time. 
Yeah, I don't know about the rest. And congrats uh, for you, uh, Doc, for your campaign. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's it's doing pretty well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Christian Zaffo. Keep coming. We get about nine more. Nine more. Come on. What's up, Zaff? <laughs> Does oh, it sound like I'm trying to get out of doing this show, Doug? What up? Zaff, are you not talking? Are you not no, speaking? I, I, I'm here. I, I had them playing over each other, and I couldn't hear you. Uh, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, man, just another day doing the thing that we do. Well, congratulations on your launch. Thanks, man. It's Speaking doing, of which, it's doing let's all right. Link. Let's get a link over there, Doc. If you got it handy. Uh, I'll get it in just a minute. Y'all right. don't forget why we're here. It's promotion. Drop your links. Drop your friends' links. More people that see what they're doing. More Carrie, my job. Could you, Carrie Love, could you drop that link for me, please? Yes. Up I, like I totally did that with the wrong. There you go. There's James. The Bonsteins. Okay. I don't know if you guys remember this. This is the uh, the bike that I was doing last time. That's finished. Yeah. <sighs> how much Thank hair? You, how, how much hair did you lose? So me? Yeah. Uh, you know, it was the setup. I thank God for the, the blue line process because if I tried to do this, yeah, <laughs> right, all of them carry. This would have been horrible. Carrie said, "What link am I dropping? All of them." The uh, the fun my comic link for damn dirty thing. If that's you don't that's already up. Somebody beat her to it, but yeah, that doesn't mean stop. You just drop every link that you can think of for everybody that's cool. That's <laughs> and pops. This is I wanted to. Uh, Get this sent over to you because you're doing that auction thing, right? Yeah, next Saturday. So I wanted to give you this one. Uh, now, do you want to just hold it and whoever, if somebody bids on it, wins it, you ship it straight to them? We'll pay for it? Or yeah, but I'm not sure I'm going to bring it twice. See, I don't want to pay to ship it twice. No, that's fine, but I'll, I'm going to send you a, a, a copy, a pit, like oh, a, yeah. a file of it because I'm not sure I'm going to be around while you're doing it. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Um, you got. I'm, I'm going to ask you to put an opening bid on that because I do not undersell anybody's art. So, all right. I'll opening send bid. That, I'll send that to you too. A, a opening bid and a buy it now price. I never want to under undersell somebody's art because then when they're going to sell their art later somewhere else, they be. Like, I got like one for twenty dollars on Pop Show. No. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's Forty-seven million dollars. I, I don't ever un, I don't ever want to undersell anybody's art. Okay, so I let them put the buy it now or bid opening prices on it because that's just it's your art, man. You know. Yeah. Yes, we we love Fanta. She drops cool stuff all the time. <coughs> we re we we retweet it and share it when we see it. What we do? Are what you kidding me? Time? I've got a I've got a stretch goal that's just for Fanta. See, everybody knows. Everybody knows her contribution. Damn! Look how many people jumped to her defense when some scrub attacked her a while back. We right. know who she is and what she does. Well, that's exactly right. It's all action around here, people. All right. Trying to get myself set up here. I was I really wasn't ready to go live. <laughs> I felt I that. That's why I'm not on camera. That's why nothing was I felt that when you said it. Kind of rushed through the edge and, and came on a little late and all that because I just wasn't ready. Um sometimes, like we were talking about, real life does it does get in the way. Um Royce was talking about that over on his channel a little while ago. What, what I got to reiterate to everybody is real life is life. This is all the candy coating on the sides. You know, this is icing and stuff that we get to do when we're not dealing with real life. You know. Well, well now I got to beg to differ with you a little bit there. 
This is my real life. This is what yeah, I do for a this living. This is what you do. Okay. But I'm talking about there's people that I'm talking mainly I'm talking about like YouTubers. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. They get interrupted with real life. And then they go, Oh, I'm sorry, man. I had to go handle this thing with my kids. No. Go handle that thing with your kids and tell your kids, I'm sorry, I was doing that thing online. You see what I'm saying? Real life is more important. Your kids, your grandkids. Priorities. More important. You know. Mr. Bracey, what's happening, my friend? Hey, you caught me in the middle of lunch. No, you came in. You could have waited until you were done eating. <laughs> nope, not doing it. What's Laurie up, Bracey? Well, I had, I've, I've aggressively decided that uh, I'm just coming on no matter what after some German guy playing D and D kept making comments like, "Damn, that guy eats a lot." A lot is like, "Dude, game is at night. It's my dinner time. I'm eating my pizza. F you." <laughs> <laughs> Which game was that? Was you on? Uh, that was uh, that was on the uh, Fellowship of the D20. Oh. Oh. Where we play our main D and D campaign, right, right. Today, uh, today we're playing Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy. Not crossed oh. over into that one yet. Um, it's it's cool stuff. Gray Wolf, what's up? What's up? It's hardcore. It's brutal. Uh, <laughs> some of the mechanics are a little clunky. But for the most part, I like it because it has that kind of first edition feel to it. Like you could die at any second. Last uh, last week, my character got stabbed in the head by a, a wyvern stinger and uh, rem remarkably survived. Mm. Nice. Oh, that is a nice looking drawing going on right there. Look at that. That's James. What are you drawing, James? Oh, I'm doing a uh, witchblade ballistic. Homage. All right, because I can, because I am such a Luddite when it comes to technology, even though I have to use it every single damn day. Uh, I cannot figure out how to share my screen through my iPad, no matter how I try. <coughs> All right. Welcome to my world. Uh, every I time help. I to do something like even like comment off to the side or look at a comment i can't get back to like where we are now and i end up like having to log out of the screen stream and come back in <laughs> my kind of man right there i'm telling you yeah i'm i'm a i'm a total boomer dude dude who are you talking to <laughs> <laughs> do you not know who i am <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gen X, man. I'm proud of it. So if you don't like it, tough. Yeah, I'm, I'm Gen X too, man. I mean, uh, let's face it. Gen X, we would go out at this morning, is, uh, come back in the evening, have scrapes, bruises, scratches, not uh, give a damn. This is something I've been commissioned to work on for Veterans Day. So it's I got lots of time, but I just want to go ahead and crank it out. <coughs> So, oh, honoring our soldiers. Not going to get a complaint from me. Very nice, very nice. Oh, it's a damn dirty shame to see that thing on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I dig uh, I dig your noir work there, Doc. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Mm. Just trying to get in here and do some edits. The book is 99.99%. And that's not one an exaggerated the, number. That's a real number. Done. One of the things I like about your work is it reminds me of the uh, newsstand black and white comics or magazine size comics I used to pick up in yeah, the uh, you, 70s. Man. Yeah. That's the yeah, goal. You like my yeah, I enjoyed my superhero stuff growing up, but I was also very drawn to the the more mature comp, the more mature content of the stuff that wasn't on the spinner rack. It was like on the magazine stands and like the uh, the pharmacies and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Speaking Pick of that, the umbrella and you, you know, Savage Sword, Savage Sword of Conan books. Yeah, 
They're magazine size. That's right, man. It's good stuff. Uh, you know, Gary Klosk used to kill it in the day. No, I'm talking about the new one. Oh, oh, I didn't know they were doing that again. Yeah, I, yeah. I hate to say it, it but it's I not with Marvel. No, it's not with Marvel anymore. Oh, okay. Because I have. I'll be right back. I've seriously noped out hard on Marvel and DC the past few years. No doubt. <laughs> I'm with that. I am. I am all about indie creators and manga. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't bought anything, anything new from Marvel or DC for a long time. But I, I do to- still go get that old stuff that that fits nicely into my collections because the old stuff was good. I watch uh I watch other podcasters and YouTubers to keep up with what's going on with the big two, uh, but I haven't bought anything from them in like three years, four years. I don't even watch other podcasters to find out what's going on with them. <laughs> if, yeah, it's, if it's a show I, about Marvel, <laughs> I'm probably not watching. Yeah, what's well, from thinking critical is pretty fair about what's going on in the industry. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll allow people, look, you can bring your show to our network and talk about Marvel and DC stuff, but you won't see me talking about Marvel and DC stuff or doing a show about Marvel and DC stuff unless now it's what? old, good Marvel DC and DC stuff. Hey, what's this, uh, what's this hey. interesting character here with this bird mask? Well, oh, that's Steve B. Hey, um, Pops. Can you make me full screen for a second? Say what? Make me full screen for a second. There you go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's, the new, that's the new one. Oh, yeah. I'll be checking that out. Yeah, that's nice. number one. It, just, it was just hey, a week couple weeks ago. Wait, am yeah. I wrong? Is the guy working on that like a really good um, homage artist to John Busima? Uh, this is actually covers done by Joe Jusco. Well, I understand that. I was thinking about the interior art. I've, I've seen online uh, recently somebody somebody's doing some comic, uh, some Conan art that looks really good, like like Big John good. Let me take a look. Got some flavor. Yeah, How about you give us some names? Who's he's doing who's his style. the writer and who's here's the, the, here's the interior? Who? All right, just give me a second. Jeez, Louise, I gotta go find it. Um, so let's see. Well, there's a bunch of people in here. That almost looks like an Alan Davis up there in the corner, from what I can see of the artwork. What this here? Yeah. Um, don't say. That looks like that almost looks like an Alan Davis style face. Uh, What's up, Doran? Who's doing, here? Who's doing stuff? <coughs> uh, What's up, Doran? Good to see you. I would really love to see a whole uh, Joe Jusco. Uh, done Conan book. I loved it when he was doing uh, Black Panther back in the uh, Okay, the so there's a He's, bunch. Of, this is a bunch. There's like multiple stories in this. So you okay. got um, I'm down for Conan Anthology. Max von Flettner is, do, is doing one. Um, Joe Juice, uh Jim Zub is by, and Joe Jusco. Oh, Joe Jusco did some of these. Okay, that's an instant um, buy. Yeah, um, Patrick Zurich. Mm. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, um, pinup colors by uh, Robert Del Toro. Um, yeah, it's like, it looks like we got some really good guys in here. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, these are going to be silhouettes. They're beautiful. They're some beautiful. Welcome back, Q. It's a pleasure to see you again, my old friend. In the midnight hour. Stand up for your right, yeah. With a rebel, yeah. Don't give up the fight. If you can't take a little bloody nose, maybe you ought to go back home and crawl under your bed. Peekaboo. What's up, y'all? Look at you. I'm good. How you doing? I love the intro. doing a ghost rider now, guys. Ghost rider. Yeah. Well, that's looking uh, good. You might want to show everybody else the finished piece from last week, though. Well, I'm going to show you right now. Hold on. Hey, did you design think- that logo? That's a really good looking logo at the bottom of that uh, character. Thank you. Yeah, I dig that. 
So Thanks you just finished the uh, the cable and domino one. I don't know if everybody got to see that or not. So let's, yeah, there you go. Voila. Hey, is, is that a, that's a Blade Runner reference. I like that. Thanks. It's all good, man. It's all good. Q does fun stuff, guys. That's why, we, that's why he hangs out with us, because he's here to have fun. I like I like me a good homage. Mm-hmm. And if you zoom That's in real is, close, Tom. if you zoom in real close, you see Crom. What? What? <coughs> Look at that! Right here. He's always there. How far is your campaign, Doc? As of this morning, I think we were at twenty-one backers. 800 and change. Nice. nice. And that's not all. There's also Doc reference in that, in that drawing. <laughs> uh, I have Doc in right my here. mind. Doc Corp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pops, I don't think people want, want you to zoom in on me eating. <laughs> yeah, well, guy? sometimes StreamYard just grabs <laughs> your face and throws it out there, and I don't have anything to do with it. I'm just trying to switch between the art and I'm Sometimes like, your face gets grabbed, you know. I'm like, I mean, you so, could. I'm so interesting. People would watch me eat salad. Look at that. You you could be <laughs> hiding behind an avatar, and nobody would know you were eating. I mean, considering how good the AI generation is these days, it's entirely possible. <clears throat> I mean, look, nobody knows whether or not I'm drinking. <laughs> But that so did the, happen. What's what's this interesting looking guy with this kind of bird looking mask here? Bulls me. Uh this is a uh, <clears throat> a, well he he's wearing a you know, plague doctor mask. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the story behind the story behind it is uh back when he was alive, he uh <clears throat> he he dismembered a uh, uh, few people to uh, bring back his wife. Does 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 anybody have any technical help for our friend Graywolf? Uh, I don't know. I was always using uh, when I was doing video production and editing. I was just always using like uh, Premiere. I so use I, v- <coughs> VSDC. It's a free. Oh, what he looks like, <clears throat> and it's a it's a pretty robust program. Pretty user friendly. There we right, go. Put that cover back up there, Stephen B. There you. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Show what he looks like. Uh, I always like the aesthetics of the uh, the plague doctor. Luna Fusion for iPad. That's good to know. Since I work primarily on iPad, I haven't done any video production in a while though. There's some things I'm not going to uh, show. What? This. Uh, this is not a, uh, a kid's uh, comment. <laughs> not kids. This, this show, this show is not kid friendly. It says right in the thing, it's not for kids. <laughs> yeah. So here's the uh, play doctor. Just cool, cool. Just beating the hell out of uh, the main character. Yeah. Plague doctor, yo. A real criminal in today's world. I don't know, I like the, 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 the uh, main character th- 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 thinks thinks the uh th- thinks uh, grabbing his weapon is, is a good thing until it just disappears out of his hand and, and just returns to the do- to the uh, doctor. That's Crips and Legends, yo, by Stephen B. Do you have a open storefront on 
fund my comic, Stephen? Uh, no, I don't. Hmm. If if you got a few of those laying around, you should probably do that. <laughs> Some of us were, were, were some people were probably broke when you had these uh, available, and then they might have a little money now, but they can't get it. Yeah, here's the uh, severed head of a uh, previous monster. Hmm. There you go, Graywell. You got a bunch of suggestions now. There's another one, handbrake. Now, Sketchy and Doring, you guys both got links in your Facebook DMs to come join us if you'd like it. And now I'm working on issue three. Excellent. Which kind of picks up right after. And then there's Doc. Poor Doc. <laughs> I do the best I can with what I got. It's always interesting to me to see which of us are working all digital. I've still got a bunch of both. <laughs> Pardon me, fellas. Good morning, Tanta. How are you doing? Hey. Hello, Fanta, darling. I'm mm -hmm. over here dying. So, so what kind of car is that, Doc? It's a uh, fictitious car because I didn't want car aficionados coming at me. <laughs> so it's a it's a cross between a uh, forty six uh, it's Ford. The it's the trunk lid of a 46 Ford, and it's a cross between a 46 Ford and a 48 Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, the front end has the Mercedes look, and the rear end has the Ford look. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't directly copy any of them. I just kind of <laughs> took took cues from from each. Because there's always that that one car guy, right? This reading. Oh yeah. Oh, you, you got that wrong, motherfucker. Oh, well, I'm so like, sorry. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. You know, like... Uh, I saw you posted one last night, didn't I, Fanta, for Doc's campaign? You got another one? See, she loves Doc. She's making extras for him. Extras. I don't remember anybody back in the day... Uh, in the letters columns on the, like the, the Marvel bullpen writing in letters like somebody tell Jack Kirby that rows of teeth are not actually like plates of teeth with like little, <laughs> little from or that's because we were kids and we didn't care what Ben Grimm's teeth looked like. <laughs> well like your devil, your devil dinosaur is a T Rex with like three little fingers instead of just two man. What's up with you? You like you don't do yeah. your research. Yeah they were out there though. <laughs> Well, they, were, they, they just didn't have the internet. They just them, didn't have the internet. That's and those, yeah, those, I call them, those letters got um, rejected. <laughs> I called them proto trolls. <laughs> proto trolls. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let me get uh, back to work. I what think, was the guy? Know. What was the guy's name? Sam Ketch that was doing Ghost Rider. He said. Oh, yeah. uh, he said he redesigned that motorcycle. So that the motorcycle heads would stop telling him what he was doing wrong. <laughs> so he made up his own. Are you talking about like the old Johnny Blaze motorcycle or the uh, Danny no the, Catch? the Danny Catch one? Okay, because I, I always thought that was weird why he went from like a a chopper to more of a rice burner kind of style, but yeah, it was pretty cool with that uh, skull fairing on it, which which was kind of like a a throwback to the earliest Ghost Rider comic books. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's interesting. That's in I did not know that he uh, he ended up having to do that because people were getting love you too, Fanta. Love you too, Fanta. Well, I you know you just want to tell good stories. You're not interested in in drawing a schematic of a motorcycle or a car or whatever. 
You, know? you don't yeah. need a car to be uh, overly detailed unless it's like very close. And for the people that do that kind of thing, rock on, man. More power yeah. to you. It's yeah. just not my cup of tea. I mean, there, there are some people who do like really fantastic, crazy realism. Uh, but you know, by and large, the the majority of comic book history has not been that. Now, I, no, I really got it's all a caricature the, of life, all of it. Yeah, I, I got to hand it to the uh, to the the assistant artists or the artists in manga who can do that. Who you know, like I don't know where they're getting their references from, but boy, they they draw some like super technical stuff. And then sometimes, like uh, I remember what was it? I was reading Helsing, and uh, they had one. <coughs> Excuse me giant kind of backpack artillery piece and there's a little note at the bottom that says like hey enjoy this th- enjoy this picture because this is the last time I'm drawing this thing <laughs> it's like right, yeah, I, remember, right. I remember that I remember him putting that I was like oh, yeah like, it's like I, 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 I draw that too man yeah it's like I can't do this panel to panel for like the whole book <laughs> I, I remember that vehicle uh, you know what? I'm getting tired of doing this thing. I'm just gonna destroy it and, and move on. Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, I'll tell you. In manga, the guy that did all the backgrounds for Akira, and he's on Twitter, and I've got his architecture books. That dude's insane. I mean, I can see why some of these guys like why why so many backgrounds in manga look the same is because they hire people just to be those background artists. Yeah, that's all he does. He does backgrounds. That's exactly what he does. But you know that's that's not completely unusual over here. Like Dave Sim had a background artist while he was drawing Cerebus. We want to, want to hear something a lot of people don't know. What's that? Dave Valentino had a background artist on Shadowhawk. Ah, I didn't know, I know, know that. Yeah, I know the guy. Huh. Yep. And all the skyscrapers and stuff, all done done by somebody else. Because let's face it, the majority of us. Uh, before we got into drawing, you know, the comics and stuff, we just like to draw the, the cool pictures of the superheroes. So that's what we got really, really good at. And I was like, oh, man, now I've got to be like a, an architecture student. <laughs> Believe it or not, I started out as a general draft, drafting architecture student. Oh, I so you had done already. Well, see, I my main goal when I was in high school um, was not drawing comic books. In fact, I was more into airplanes. And I okay. was into um, a guy named Kelly Johnson, who is the, who is the founder and the creator of Stunkworks. James, you're breaking up pretty bad. I mean, not breaking up. You're getting really static. Yeah, his, his mic is pretty muffled. Can you hear me now? Let me turn my mic. We can hear you. You're just staticky. Seriously, right now. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I remember Skunk Works. That is cool. Doc, you want to send Kirby? Is that any better? Just drop the link. Yeah. (laughs) Doc, is that better? It's just, it might not be coming in your channel. I don't know which channel he's on, man. Uh, Is that better? He's coming in in loud and clear for me now. Okay, I, I, I see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I see what was going on. No, but yeah, I, my main goal was I was going to design airplanes for uh, Skunk Works. That's what I wanted to do. That is cool. Here you go, Kirby. Kirby, 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 Kirby. I developed a, a great love of aircraft because my uh, my uncle built lots of model kits for World War II. He specifically liked tanks. I started becoming kind of a World War II, uh, World War II guy, but my thing was like I like building models of the, all the great fighter aircraft. And yeah, the fire- Spitfire was my favorite. Uh, like I, I know it's a, it's kind of a dorky reason to like it, but I, I really liked the P forty Warhawk just because it was like really badass looking, and it was almost impossible to knock out of the sky. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, yeah, <laughs> But it was tough. It had a bathtub for a pilot's protection. <laughs> I particularly have a soft spot for two aircraft. One I admire, the other I would have wanted to serve on. So the one I admired was the F4U Corsair. Oh, <laughs> beautiful plane. 
but uh, <laughs> if I were actually on active duty during World War II, I would have wanted to be on a Catalina, a PBY. Huh. Oh, no. those, are, those, are good, those are actually good planes. Big, I was surprised to find out graceful. Are, I was really surprised to find out that our top ace was flying a uh, P-38 Lightning, which was such an unusual design for the time. Yep. Yep. I really yep. thought it would have been somebody flying a Mustang, but like, no, the Lightning with that that twin tail and the uh, yep. you know the the single airfoil going between the two, and that thing yep. was a beast. Fast, agile, and hit mm-hmm. hard. That was, yep, sure was. Good stuff. You know that plane was used in the only purposely. U.S. assassination of a single person. What? <laughs> oh, tell me this story. No, you know, the, the yeah, the, the the mission was to take out the um, head naval officer of Japan, Admiral Yamato. <laughs> Yamato, yeah, you, you, yeah. They and, got an they got an intercept about where he was going to be, and they launched a squadron of P fifty eights, and said, they go, go kill him. <laughs> they timed it just right, and they came in and shot him. Go get wow. him. The architect of Pearl Harbor, go get him. Those yep. were some motivated pilots. <laughs> wow. yeah, I mean, it, if you can look it up on YouTube, but they did a hist- they did it on History Channel about what, the operation there like that. And they were talking about it. And yeah, he said the only reason he actually got the guy was he, he fired to clear his guns before he opened up on him. And clearing of the guns is what got him. <laughs> and um yeah, it's a it's a really interesting um, story of how they found out about him, and yeah, he was there was three Betty bombers, and um, he was in the middle one, yep. and the guy he was clean he was he was you know cleaning the rounds before he started opening up, and the rounds hit it. Amazing, yeah. That kind of reminds me of hearing how the the story of how the Red Baron got taken down. It wasn't a dog fight, but it was just some random soldier on the battlefield. Uh, well, they're not they, sure about it. They're really not sure. Not sure, but they they think they tracked it back to that one particular guy, and the dude just got a lucky shot and took him down. Yeah, but like I said, they're not really sure who actually shot him down. So it could, you know, there's there's different different you know calculations. It's like, <laughs> like, when the, it comes, like you think you think that would guy would end up getting knocked down in a dog fight, but it was you know, dudes firing from the ground who took him out. Yeah. Welcome, Doran. Hey, hello. What's up, Doran? There it is. Yep. I got my fancy new camera set up so I can actually draw and actually stream it. How do you like nice. that? Oh, hey. I like them apples, hey, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's all action now. See how that works? <laughs> all action, all the time. World Jeez. of the butchery. Yeah, it's my uh, kind of going through the process of building the world, right? So I do a lot of world building. Thought that'd be a little bit different, nice. something different to show as well. So yeah, it's like really breaking out the story sections. Like you know, there's slaughterhouses over here, upper district, lower district. You know, inventory <laughs> stuff it's like, like that. A map. It is, it's yeah, and it map. helps me figure out the story and the rules of the story as I go too. As I've started doing a little bit of work on it, flushing things out. That's cool. I make lots of notes like flora and fauna and technology and stuff like that before I start drawing anything, even though even if it's not yep. going to directly appear thing, just to have it in mind when I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, because I'm trying to create kind of a uh, it's steampunk. I'll say steampunk inspired. So I'm trying to do something very different um, in the sense of a lot of stuff, but inspired, not exactly steampunk. Like I've been studying steampunk in that. But like, well, this I like that little floating thing over here is kind of a yeah, mix. It's a combination of like hot air balloon and like a, what looks like a combustion engine. Yeah, it's got a little propeller on it. And these are actually, uh, when I define this, it's actually an old film projector. If you remember from back you know, in the day in the yes. theaters in the 80s, it's got the two yes. reels here going and a bunch of little cameras going. So once no, it's all lens. defined out, yeah. Lens on yeah, the front. All, yeah, lens on the yeah, front, I, four on the bottom. I, it's like they're scouting I, tech, like, I was going to say, it looks like a flying camera to me, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. and it's just it was an idea I had, so I just drew it in as I was doing everything else and kind of tried to piece away at it. 
um, to try and get that. Yeah. You never know it's an end of the world is. thing, too. Yeah. I know for uh, for years, John Byrne was one of my favorite artists growing up, and he he drew a spaceship out of a out, out of a hot iron air uh, 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 name it like a hair curler in one ep- issue. Of Fantastic. <laughs> when I found that out, my oh, yeah. was just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got these little propellers on it too. Yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> yeah, just reuse of technology. That's really what steampunk is, right? It's this kind of repurposing of what you have from a certain genre. So I'm trying yeah. to put a bit of that in there. And even like I've been working on this kind of underwater suit thing that where they scavenge off the bottom of the ocean is because I mean that's... the rest of the world's flood, right? So you see like those big buzz saw, it's kind of carrying an egg, got a shipwreck in the back. Uh, you know, trying to define little things like this part here is off. I looked at a look, old locomotive and just tried to steal some of the looks <laughs> of some things, like the way they're built and the design and just did did my Kirby own flavor the, of it. Kirby, do you still want the link? If you haven't gotten it yet, I'm going to drop it over in the DM group. Reminds me of the Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, it's got this like kind of steam engine underwater idea here. That's why the kind of the, the, the steam yeah, is coming I, out here, but also some like an oxygen type thing going on over here type thing off the left side. So trying to think to make it make sense to to some of the parts, you know. No, make yeah. it so fucking confusing people don't ask questions. That's what you're yeah, right. Yeah. It just works. Oh, uh, check your, uh, check your, check I don't know how it works, but it just works. <laughs> that's that's one thing I appreciate about like some of the the old Marvel artists, you know, they, they weren't like tech artists and that sort, you know, they, they weren't engineers and stuff. And like, like I look at John Buscema and Byrne and they would just kind of draw like this, all these kind of like little shapes. And you would just understand that was complex machinery in the cracks of the armor and whatnot. Right. <clears throat> someone, someone still, still continues to ask, ask them to work with this thing. It's, it's magic. That's what it's, it's, magic. it's magic, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's steampunk though, like they it's that's why I have to say steampunk inspired, right? They're very I don't want to say sensible, they, they are a sensitive community. They won't back something if it doesn't fit into the genre correctly. And I'm kind of, mm. you know, you want to be inspired by it, but you don't want to offend at the same time, shall we say. Um Right. It's gotta fit the aesthetic. But you know, I appreciate the fact that from steampunk we've got broader things we've got like diesel punk we yep. got bio punk we got all kinds of other punks that have like taken that idea and gone into a, a different technological directions with them yeah and that like, victorian era inspiration on the clothes combined with some kind of kind of weird technology like what a crossbow would look like and that is pretty neat mm-hmm. it's pretty neat when they figure it out even though i'm even though i'm not crazy about designing technology uh, there's something about it that is kind of fun to try and figure out how to make something look oh, yeah. like it. Um, yep. uh, Don't forget, people, next week to Madness Art Auction slash Sale, because you know you want some. Just come get some. <laughs> Gotta step away for just a second, gentlemen. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, well, we're not going to show off your art if you're not here. The, the classic ass slap there. <laughs> <laughs> We'll move on to the next guy. If you're not going to see me, see me. Stephen was out there. He was on a gambling boat, yo. He was out there on the ocean, and it was like there was more slot machines on that boat than there was people. I know when the whole boat. Oh, am, am, am I right, him. Stephen? Was there was there more slot slot machines than there were people? There were slot machines. There were slot machines <coughs> everywhere. Everywhere. There were, there were, there were, there were slot machines in the uh, fourth part of the hangout, and, and there's like a whole floor full of slot machines. There were more slot machines on that boat than there were people. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> did you come out ahead yeah. or behind, money wise? Did you use them? <laughs> did you sit down at any of them? Uh, I, 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 sat, I, sat, I sat in a few of them, and uh, and, and uh, just watch, just watch my mom play, play, play a few of them. Cool, cool. 
So you didn't lose your shirt or anything like that. You didn't end up with uh, <laughs> some credit card debts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't. Really, I don't really go for go for the slot machines because, honestly, I just I just feel like they're kind of rigged. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course they are. And, <laughs> but if I see, but if I see like a claw machine that that does that has like piles of 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 a stacks of a hundred dollar, uh, two hundred fifty dollar, or uh, even five hundred dollar uh, stack. Then, then I'd be like, eh, yeah, what the hell? Just, just put it, just put in a, a dollar or two, and see, and oh, see, and see if it works. Like, my wife is like the master of those claw machines. Like, we've never done a Vegas oh. one, but like, you go into Walmart or something, they get the claw machine. She is always pulling like little stuffed critters out of those things. Like, <laughs> and I'll spend like fifty bucks trying to get something out. She's like one dollar, boom, every time. <laughs> yeah, I ain't no good at that shit either. Funny, funny thing. Uh, one time all I had all I had was like a dollar left, and and I and everyone was uh was out on uh, excursions, and I, and I just had to stay stay, stay on the uh, ship, and all I had a, and all I had was like was like one dollar in my pocket, and, and I came across a uh, claw machine that looked uh I. I don't know. Charging. Something, something was 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 telling me to 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 put the dollar in and to uh, and to give it a shot. So so, so I put a dollar in and, and somehow I won hundred dollars. Nice. <laughs> That's a nice. So it's good to see investment. someone win. Yeah. I had a friend tell me once about the one arm bandits there that. And I didn't, and I tried it, and I actually won eight hundred dollars. Um, he said, "Go to the spot where there's a lot of people getting their money, because they want to, them to see more success as they're getting their money." So his theory was that those machines that are close to where people are cashing out or getting their money, their little containers with their their coins or whatever, is where there's going to be the they want to see action, right? So the people are excited. Um, I didn't believe him. But at the end of the evening, as I was exiting and lost sixty dollars, I was like, you know what? I got ten bucks left. You know what I mean? I'll tr let's go try it. I tried it, no one like like a seven fifty or something. I was like, wow, it was just luck. It's all luck in the end, right? It's in the favor of the house, or they wouldn't be one, doing it. One of the things I learned because because one time uh, I, I I was uh, the first the first time I, I, I went to one of the publishers, I didn't win anything. So, so, I, so I ended up looking online because I got curious on how, on how uh, on how do you win these things, and and from the from what I saw in the uh, video, it said like half, it said like pretty much half the time, if you see a call machine in a in anywhere, like say like say in the uh, Casino or uh, or a uh, arcade. Pretty much the majority of them are rigged to the point where it will have to pay out. And and you had to uh, figure out when when the time it would be for for them to pay out. Yeah. Because because they would have to earn a certain amount of uh, dollars. <coughs> Pardon me. To, yeah. To, if, uh, to give up. If they don't see anybody winning anywhere, right? It's a sign that something's not a good deal. <laughs> but it, you know, yeah. there's something going on. If if someone if someone wins in at a claw machine, then that means hey, they they just paid out, which means. Find another one. Yeah, I've never won at one. I, I, <laughs> yeah, never. I've never won Crazy with anything, ever. Period. Ever. Oh, period. I, can't, I can't. I can't say that. I've actually. I actually won many, many years ago. I won the year supply M and M's. Right. 
That's a deal. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh, dude. Never, never won a damn thing. Not and, even but, once. And what they, what they did. While I am interrupting you. That sounds like what they did. Could you stop interrupting me while I am interrupting you? <laughs> Where did that come from? It's like a magical voice. <laughs> And like my my family likes to, to gamble a little bit, but every time I've gone, like I usually just uh, I budget myself. Like, okay, if I can't get anything off a hundred bucks, I'm out of here. And like, I've never yep. won anything. So. Yep. It's just entertainment for me. Like that's when whenever we went it was just because people weren't friends, family were in town, and they never like I come from a small town, so they were never to a casino before. So it's on their list mm -hmm. of something kind of to do, like a bucket list almost. So it's like, yeah, right. I'll right, go right. spend 80 bucks, right? I mean, let's go spend 80 bucks. And that's our entertainment for the evening. You know? I yeah. don't find it entertaining to lose money, though. <laughs> it's the chance. It's that, I mean, in that the, thrill. In, in this economy, I do that every day for free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I can't afford yeah. to be entertained. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how casinos are doing. That would be interesting to hear during the whole inflation. Well, everything else going on. Ones the ones by me because I just live. Um, I live. I'm live up here in the Metroplex, in Texas. So I'm close to the stuff on the border of Oklahoma. Those are doing really good because hmm. huh. they've got the reser They've got the ones at the reservations, and those right. are doing phenomenal work. Yeah, always, yes. yeah, they seem to do well there, but it's, it's always, I guess it'll always be people will say, okay, it's hard times. I got 20 bucks. Let's go see if I can make it into a hundred. Just kind of like when you go to the corner store, I'm that's, sure that's, everybody's seen, seen oh, this yes. before. Yeah. Like yeah people just scratch tickets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Scratching can, tickets like crazy. Got disposable <laughs> income. Yeah. And can't risk that when things are tight. No. Nope. But as I mean, Doc is kind of saying, it's, they're they're in a desperate state, right? They're like, I got to do try something, right? So gambling's the, yeah. yeah. Gambling's Joseph gambling. Haywood said uh, the only two classes of people who are truly free are the insanely rich and the pitifully poor. <laughs> neither, neither neither of them give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I agree to agree to quite a bit with that. Being from a small town, you know, um, there's a lot of people who don't have much money but they're perfectly happy and yet they still have three or four kids and you know what i mean like yeah I, I, hey there's nothing wrong with small towns i grew up in a small no nope. no i wait to go back right, <laughs> when i anybody, retire i'm going home yeah. if anybody starts singing john mellencamp i'm out of here nope i yeah yes. no 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 john no john mellencamp for me please nope uh -uh. is there like a sign up somewhere john mellencamp? do you have that <laughs> no i grew up <laughs> The thing is, I grew up in the Panhandle of Texas, so. Sorry. Oh, that was great. That was great. 100 degrees during the summer, negative 2 degrees in the winter. That's why I said that was sorry. A, yeah, that was, I, did my, uh, I did my MOS training in Texas. Where? Like, fourth morning, it was like 85 degrees out already. And I was shocked when winter rolled around, and I was – freezing my nuts off when we went for our PT test. I was like, wait, wait, I've, I've been like in hell's outhouse over here and all of a sudden it's cold? What is this? What is this? Where were, you, where were you at? Where were you at MOS? Uh, I was a, they've changed the MOS, but I was a 91G at the time. I was a behavioral science specialist. No, where, were you was at? A, where were you at in Texas? Uh, Fort Sam. I was just, I did my uh, medical training at Sam. Everybody does their medical training at Sam. Yeah, I was, no, 60, I was I was I was no, whiskey. I did mine in Balboa. Really? I mean, because like where I was at, like everybody was coming to Sam. We had, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force. Well, this, I know. this was this was in the eighties, so you know. Mine was, uh, mine, was, was mine was mine was eighties, early nineties. Yeah, I was out. I was out there in ninety two. Yeah, we were early. I was 80s. getting out in ninety two. I was done. I was. I'm out the door. I'm going home. That's when I got out. Ninety two. Yep. I did too. You guys got out and they, they got me in. <laughs> so it's their fault. Blame them. 
I will put it this way. After 918 days in freaking Korea, you are ready to come home. I bet. One of the, yeah, one of the most ironic funny that happened is uh, when we were graduating, one of, uh, one of the guys in my platoon, right, yeah, he was half Korean. His dad had been over there in Korea during the war, and, you know, came back with his Korean bride, and, you know, here he is. And of all the duty stations, they sent his ass to Korea, and he's like, why am I going to Korea? Is it because I'm half Korean? Look, my mom, my mom married some guy to get out of Korea. And they're sending me back to Korea. <laughs> That's oh, right dude, line. I'll tell you this. I got over to Korea, and the first thing I was like was like, dude, don't go out the door here and try to pick up those girls right there on the curb. They only want one thing. Mm-hmm. They want to come to the United States. Yeah, I was like, yes, sir. Out there in they're, the hotel. They're so. just. They're just there craving your companionship. That's all they want. Yes. Oh, no, I got part two because I, I was dumb enough to fall for a Chinese girl. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you end up with a dragon lady? No, the U.S. government oh. said I couldn't marry her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they stepped in to protect you. <laughs> we'll see if you. Oh, they stepped in to protect themselves because there's, there's a little clause in the laws on, on servicemen and, and Stuff like that. And I was working the consulate of Guangzhou, China at the time. So there's some stuff in the laws that you can't do stuff, certain things. They didn't want we to bring it back. We, we found upon that sort of thing here. <laughs> they called it they, a, a, they called it a, what was the actual words? A threat to national security. Oh, really? They, oh, wow. They, yeah. They didn't want yeah. To, That's some deadly love. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. We don't want you to think of this as a negative thing. Let's just let's, but... just, think, let's just think of it as an opportunity to uh, not fuck up. <laughs> hey, look, 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 guy. It's not you. It's us. It's us. It's not you. <laughs> it's not you. Oh no, they, it's my they, country. They, it's my country. They, I'm sorry. It's not me. They didn't even try that part. They didn't even try that part. They were like, "Oh, it's all you, you dumbass." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we don't yeah. care. We don't care that your CO is an alcoholic. We don't care that all your troops are an alcoholic, and you're the only one keeping them out. Mm-hmm. You are not marrying that girl. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> oh man, I mean, they made dude. I have never seen. Uh, I have never seen. People are so vindictive and evil. I mean, they had, dude, they had the horns, the pitchforks, and everything. They're ready oh, wow. to by my ass. I mean, you know, everybody's got a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you how bad this thing got involved. I had the highest ranking chaplain in the entire United States military at the time involved in it. Dang. The Crucifixion Club will meet at 1600 on the corner deck. <laughs> and, 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 and he was wearing a star, okay? I mean, he had a star on those. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, shit, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I was like, oh, I'm fucked. Shit, dude, I, I was like, real. Yeah, and then I was like going, oh, yeah, that's right. I got two days and I can get the hell out of here. And I was out the door. I was gone. I was on a plane coming back to the United States. I was a free man. I had my DD 214, and I was like, fuck you. I still couldn't marry her. I'm going home. Exactly. Wait, did you end up my, marrying the Chinese girl anyway? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, I didn't get married. Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> got out of the army, and then I got the Chinese. <laughs> nope. They, oh, no. Even, even when I was out of the army, they wouldn't let me marry her. Oh. Oh, dude, they had it. Um, they had it. They had her name on this piece of paper saying this lady is not committed <laughs> in the United States, no matter what. I was like, you motherfuckers. Oh, oh. damn. So she was. Uh, Maybe she, she was, was just a, a wholesome kind of gal. Yeah. Maybe she was another thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny how those rules didn't apply for our government officials. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so what, yeah. 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 Well, well, what's up? <laughs> Mr. Smallwell. Don't get me started. Don't. Mr. Smallwell, <laughs> how, how exactly did you get away with that? 
<laughs> I've got what you call connections. <laughs> <clears throat> I got a little, uh, got a little clout. Well, is that what that is? What's a, what's a little insider trading? Uh, hey, yeah, I thought we just, I just thought yeah. we called, called that yeah. corruption. How silly of me. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we, we can see after the night. You did, you, wait, you did what to who? I'm uh, getting off the chat. I'll see you soon. Okay, well, good to see you and welcome back, my friend. Thank you. So, here's what I have so far. Tell everybody good. to make your find you, brother. Right on. And here's why I drew uh, <clears throat> from a stand in. Oh, look at that. Ghost Rider and Punisher. Look at that. Two of my faves. Very cool. Which, you want to know something funny? I didn't, I didn't realize that until I finished this. I drew on the back of this. <gasps> oh, 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 did you mean? To, like, you <laughs> did? Oh, uh, well. That's why there's two sides. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh dang. Me. that one's that's mine. That's what a scanner Steven. is for. Okay. <laughs> scanner. Stephen, that that's off. mine. Don't ever sell that to anybody. If you say, if you get rid of it, I want it. All right. So, Bob's, uh, Bob's yeah. Those mistake stuff, man. He loves it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop off so, so I can go eat. Uh, right, tell everybody where they can find you, bro. Huh? Oh. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. you can find me. Uh, uh, here on the Man is Comic Network, and you can also find me on on my own channel <clears throat> here on YouTube called Bullcast Studios. You can also find me on Instagram and on Twitter, which is also known as X. Some nights you can find me passed out at the local bar, <laughs> but we'll keep that to ourselves, shall we? <laughs> I will not confirm. All right, good night, Steve. Here? Later. All right, see you, see you, Stephen. Keep that to yeah. yourselves. All right. Oh, really? Let's see. Let's see. Let's Talk to us, Zap. You're muted, bro. Talk to us. Sorry, I forgot I did that. The dog was on a rampage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I was saying, Doc, this one's I'm doing for you. This is uh, my version of your guy. All right. It's going to be his. Uh, oh, that's cool. His sweet cheeky in the background there. <laughs> right on, right on. There you um, go. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be heading out of here. But, right. um, you know, anyone wants to go to right there under my name, Foresight11. That's my website. You can subscribe for free and stay up to date with everything. I'm about to send my stuff for the my first fulfilled campaign out to the printers, and as soon as that gets back and in people's hands, the second one will be up and running. So I'll have nice. my at that point. Nice. Very nice. And Congrats. for everybody that's missed the first one, I'm, there's going to be a catch up tier for it. So cool, cool, cool. That's the way to do it. So Here's. I'm going to uh, I'll finish this one up and uh, show you it next week. Right on. Always good seeing you, Zaf. Thanks for coming out, brother. Same. Thanks. Yep, Thanks for having Zaf. All right. Later, guys. What? Look, it's Doc. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to show you guys something. I found this the other day, and I was like, what the heck? I was going through some old boxes um, so years ago when I was a teenager. long time ago now. I submitted to Wizard. And look, at, I forgot that they mailed this back to me. Some kind of like marketing thing from the from like the eighties. Well, I'm sitting with nineties. Yeah, like nice. all their it's like a promotional thing talking about their stuff. I thought I thought that was kind of funny. I would never see one of these again. It's a pretty good shit. Were, like, were you just like submitting art to some of their little uh, art prompts kind of things? I was trying to get a cover. I did a cover of uh, Wolverine and Sabretooth. I was trying to. I still have the art somewhere. They even sent me like a little schedule of when their covers are 
going to be releasing the deadlines for them. Kind of funny to think. Back in, oh, there we go, 97. So they would have sent that back to 97, 98. A little time machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a little X-Files. But, little X-Files. but did they give you a rejection letter along with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the, for the cover I submitted. I forget why I submitted that cover. Um, yeah, I was delusional at that time. <laughs> I mean, that was all right, I guess. <laughs> no, I mean, did, did they actually give you a rejection letter, or did they just no. say No. Uh, they probably did. I, uh, <laughs> no, I don't remember, to tell you the truth. Um, but they were nice enough to send me this as well. And then all these years it sat, and then I just stumbled across it. Still it's in good condition, cool. too. Look at that. Yeah. Well, it's been sitting, yeah, inside of like a folder all these years. I mean, it has like the wizards. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I put some of my artwork up on uh, some pieces I worked on recently on Facebook, and my uncle reminded me, like, oh, you know, I've got some of your stuff from like years back. It's like, wow, I forgot about it. Like, man, scan it. Put, it. put it up there. I'd love to see what it was. I don't even remember what I gave you back in the day. <laughs> Kind of neat discovering those old pieces and like, oh wow, look at this. Yeah, I I kept a lot of it, but I I'm kind of a strange bird. The the path I took with my drawing. First off, I never would wanted to look at other people's art. Like I mean, I obviously read comics and that, and that will inspire your degree. But I never studied any of the art from from Jim Lee or or anybody I was reading Texera, whatever. I just always did my own thing. I didn't feel like I wanted to do that. It wasn't until years later I learned that that's what you have to do, right? You know what I mean? You have to have a foundation and you have to study. Now I've got books all over the place, you know, throughout my life and stuff like that. But it was funny how I was resistant to being influenced by anything else, um, you know. I mean, I can actually, I can actually respect that attitude, like not wanting to be subconsciously influenced by anybody else's work to develop your own yeah. style. But it's like you said, yeah. you got to have that foundation first. Yeah, I was at, I'm going to a couple cons this year. Like, I've got my little con tour going up here in Canada, and one of them asked me to do something. You guys probably would know what it is. Is there speed drawing? <laughs> yep. There's competitions yep. at cons, and yep. they invited me to do speed drawing, and I didn't know what it was. I told them, I said, you know, I, I said, I have, to, I have to tell you, in my life, I've drawn less than 10 Marvel character pieces of art ever. Like, I literally did not want to draw Spider-Man. I did, well, I have one Spider-Man. I shouldn't say that. I did draw Spider-Man once. I have, like, one Superman that a friend asked for. I got a ROM that a friend asked for. You know what I mean? But I haven't... I never sat and draw Superman and all of them in a whole bunch of different ways and studied what Jim Lee was doing with this or, you know, whoever was doing with that. And that's why for a lot of years, though, you don't grow. Uh, you know, you don't get the feedback you need or you're not studying. You don't kind of figure out how to do some tricks, right? So I think that's the, the bad part of it is that you it slows you down as a growing as an artist, I think. Boy, I would suck at that competition. I am not fast at all. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm hor no, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not fast. I like taking my this is this is me relaxing, right? That's what art is to me when I draw. That's my downtime for myself. So I'm not interested in going fast. Uh, you know, that's why I don't draw my own comics as well. I never, you know, I never developed to do stuff. I'm interested in getting faster now because I'm getting older, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure how to do it. Some people can, right? Some people are super fast. I mean, I do watch, I do watch other people's videos to see how they draw so fast, and it, it is kind of helpful. But I've been, I've been drawing the way I draw for like, you know. 50 years, 45 years, something yep. like that. So I'm, I'm kind of exactly. like, this is the gear I'm stuck in. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love watching David Finch's videos, but it'd be interesting if he did a speed one. What cracks me up is I know some people that can draw really fast. Yeah. But it takes them for every Finch book. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's weird. <laughs> they're, they're fast and they can't produce. That, that's crazy that David Finch can actually draw fast considering how much line work he puts in a piece. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about clown artists. I'm talking about people that can draw really good. They can draw really fast, but for some reason, it takes a long time. For them. <laughs> well, I guess David, David Finch is, is an absolute beast, man. He's oh, just, I yeah. love his, 
and he can teach. His videos online are awesome. Yeah, I have yeah, so many are. of them bookmarked. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. He's but remember, guess. people, watching one person's streams does not make you a master artist. <laughs> no, not even close. His hatching, like I'm horrible at hatching to this day. I studied it and I like whatever. My brain just goes back and does its own thing. I, I just let my brain go sometimes. And so it's hard to follow some of those rules. But I understand that they work. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I just try and I just try and get into that flow state. And sometimes that is when it clicks. You know, you just, you kind of just get into that zone. Everything else just kind of goes away and you're in the work. And you're excited, like, oh, I've been at this for like five, six hours. And look at how much I actually got done. Wow. Yeah, no one's ever more, su- no one's ever more surprised than I am when I actually finish a drawing. One, oh, really? one of the funniest <laughs> things for me is somebody, they, they're like, I sat down for an hour with so-and-so. And, and they use that for every piece of cred for everything they're ever talking about. Uh, it's like that one hour covered my whole life in art, yo. <laughs> yeah. I the very first con I was at, um, the guys next to us was in is, was into animation and he was creating comics and it was really cool. They were doing well. Um, but people would stop by and he'd draw stuff for them, right? So they he'd draw their character, they could sit at it there and he'd go, okay, I'll draw it. But I, what I didn't realize until my friend Corey told me. He goes, he's got blue lines underneath everything. So he already has a template underneath it. And he's just, I'm like, oh, I never even would have thought of doing something like that. So he's already got all the shapes done. He's just adding detail to the character over top. Right. What the yeah. saying. I'm like, oh, he's sneaky. Yeah, I stopped. Like, oh, I remember Master, my- Master Dan, my dude. How you doing, brother? What's up, Dan? Okay, I used to just do like, legit. I guess like a lot of people start out because they used to have the production thing where you have pencilers, anchors, colorists, and all that. And so I used to just yeah. focus on nothing but pencils. And then when I had to start doing everything myself, uh, you know, my, my pencils are super sketchy and everything gets finished in the inking phase. Yeah. Yeah. So like Even I, I, like, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if I can get the angle on it here. Why is it sideways? Don't be sideways. There you go. I want you like that. Like, uh, I think, I think I worked on this piece, um, three weeks before I was able to color it and the coloring took another week. Oh, wow. Looks like there's tons of detail. Oh, there oh, yeah. is tons of detail. I'm, I'm something of a detail fanatic when I get the chance to actually like, really do the kind of work I want to do. Cause this is the kind of pencil work I used to do ages ago. Uh, before I went digital and then when I went digital I started letting uh, my colors I handle all the detail and stuff you know I kind of stopped doing hatching and things like this and when I did this piece it's hard to get it straight on the camera there when I did this piece I wanted to see if I could uh, apply my old pencil and airbrush style techniques to it and it came out pretty damn good I'm pretty pleased with it almost like a Neptune in the background is that Neptune, or is Jupiter. that like a whole other planet? Jupiter. Ah, yes. yes. Okay. I noticed this that spot, taking... that storm spot. It looks like yes. Yeah, this battle is taking place on Io. So one of the moons. Is that yeah. a moon event? No, oh, Io is. Yeah. yeah, we got a, a book. Uh, we got a series we're working on called Blood World, and this particular book is called <coughs> Phoenix. And so it's like a. Game of Thrones meets Warhammer meets Cyberpunk, uh, just a whole bunch of influences. The particular story I'm I'm working on is a uh, uh, imagine mutant Conan uh, meets Thunder the Barbarian kind of world. That's my thing because I I generally prefer to draw uh, organic stuff uh, to a lot of text stuff. I can do it, but it's not my favorite thing to draw. But every now and then, I to... preach. I say that, but. Like, I really do like render metal. I think shading and rendering metal is like really cool, but I, I hate drawing things like cars and skyscrapers and shit like that, but I'll do oh, it yeah. if I have to. <laughs> I tell you, and inside another, of... Like, um... like, uh, crowd scenes, man. Crowd scenes, that is a slog. I've studied that stuff, and it's amazing when you start looking at like comics and that to see how the tricks they use to, to draw a crowd is quite smart. Um, but yeah, I, I've caused some artists to have to draw crowds before, and they usually don't like it. <laughs> they're not—they're not happy to draw a hundred of something. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's when that's when you get an email from me going, "Hey, listen, we got to talk." Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. no. <laughs> we need to talk. Know, when you see a master like Jeff Darrow drawing a cityscape just loaded with people, and each thing on the page is so interesting, he puts so much thought into each and every individual little person walking on this yeah. random street, this big mm. kind of like wide shot, you know, establishing your setting. You're like, man, how does this guy do this while like wanting to put a gun in his head, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it Robert Bateman who's a really famous uh, artist a, a nature artist type I, I don't know if you guys would know him or not he might be famous yeah. only up here in canada but he used to do book tours so i worked at a chapters which is a bookstore a major bookstore up here and he was here and a friend was telling me like like i always tried to learn how to draw space kind of like you know you have a spacing in the background like with the stars and all that and i said it takes forever right and then my friend told me all he did was take his brush and flick white paint at it yep <laughs> and that's how he created space it's like what Yep. Yeah, so yeah, you're trying to draw little circles, trying to, you know. And that's exactly the <laughs> right way. I, I used to have a paint, I used to have a toothbrush set aside just for flicking paint. You know, you just, oh, it yeah. And then you <laughs> flick it with your thumb, and there would be your stars or, or you know, your, your black spray if you're doing blood is black ink. You know, back when the Comics Code Authority was a big deal, like, you'd like right. splash some of your black ink, and then you'd, you'd add some like this, the stippling effect from the spray on the brush, and it looked really cool. <laughs> the way I put it is this if you want to learn how to do na nature backgrounds nature backgrounds there's no ba body better to watch He's, they've got this YouTube channel of Bob Ross he is <laughs> That's what you're Bob Ross, Ross. <laughs> yeah, we watch lots of Rob Ross up here is he Canadian? no he was on the, no, he's he's American. On the public channel yeah because he was on the public channel he yeah. got it for free up here. Yeah. <laughs> his background, his his landscapes are some of the best. And he does them so fast, you're like going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just a happy little trick. I right would there. I would suggest uh you go to a channel called Christopher Blaylock Fine Art and watch that guy paint <laughs> landscapes. Yeah, you won't get no happy little clouds. You get he's a, under edge. Because he's faster than Bob Ross and better. Oh. <laughs> well, Bob Ross is not going to get any better since he passed away. You know. Yeah, he never. You don't got... know what he's doing up there, man. <laughs> he, he, he's painting he, uh... everything. He's, he's painting the sky. <laughs> he uh, yeah, he right. was God, God, he's like, tearing down. Oil. He was trained by I don't know if you guys remember the guy before him, Bill Alexander. <laughs> yeah, now I've, mm -hmm. I've seen some of his videos. And, he had, and, and instead Ross, of happy little trees, he had that almighty tree lives right here. Yeah, <laughs> he was great. So, you, you could tell that Bob Ross copied him. Well, he trained him there, yeah. he taught him that technique. Yeah, everybody say hello to John from John's Lawn Box. What's up? What's up, John? Hey, John. Yeah, exactly. Very much. Wait, so. What just happened? I don't know. He ran away. He's like, I'm hey. out of here. Bob Ross. <laughs> and he's, he's le like you said, he's a legit teacher. I watched a guy who didn't know how to paint at all. And he was talking about how his, like, his mom likes his sister better than him. Like, oh, he gave my, <laughs> my mom got a great gift for my sisters. So I'm going to show her that I'm, I'm worth something too, right? So he watched a Bob Ross video and painted a painting following Bob Ross. And for a guy who was not an artist, man, it turned out great. And watching his face journey as he realizes, like, first it doesn't look anything. And by the time he's done, it was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's looking at the camera, like, in, in, in shock. And I was like, this is actually looking like something. It's actually looking good. And then <laughs> after doing this beautiful painting, and then, <laughs> then he writes on it in nice red paint. He's like, see, Mom, I'm better than my sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this <laughs> suck. but yeah Please. like this dude who didn't know how to paint or draw or anything like he, he followed along with bob ross and he turned out a really nice painting but you do know that on his show he painted three versions of that picture yep oh yeah every show he did he did, a, he did the first one before the show oh, of course he would do one during the show, and he would do one after the show. And if he was at a, if he was visiting a, um, 
network, PBS network. The third one he would leave to the to the network's office. Uh, well, it makes it really well, makes sense because to be able yeah. to talk and explain it properly and do it is a super skill. Like you gotta you gotta do the same thing a couple times, right? I would assume to, yeah. you have to well, repetitive. He did, he did the final one was always going to be the thumbnail for the for, for the picture the, uh, of the episode for the show. Then there was the one he did live, and then he would do one more just to give to the station he was at. I was not aware of that. I thought he was just a friggin' prodigy. He is a freaking prodigy. He still, uh, he still is. <laughs> just, All right, listen, listen. I'm, I'm sorry. I gotta I, I gotta do a little I give him credit. Okay. But we gotta do a little debunking here. He was a one trick pony, man. There's everything was exactly palette knife mountains and then dab 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 <laughs> trees. Uh, it was it just he followed the system. same rules as he was taught. It's the system. You got to have a system. Yeah, it was exactly that. right. A system. There's and, uh, there's nothing wrong with being, with being the master of one thing. You're still well, the master of one I thing. always wanted to see him actually branch out and do things a little bit differently. But he, he never and did. Look at his style. Yeah, I doubt he would, yeah. Because he wouldn't be trained in it, yeah. Yeah, he's got his system. He's probably very comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like, uh, it potentially... It could have hurt his branding if, like, it was like, oh, well, Bob, that one doesn't look very good at all. So maybe there's that like doesn't look here. like your other one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But I'm like you. I like I like to experiment with uh different styles. Like right now, like from the pictures I show you, the one I'm working on now, and the one I showed you a minute ago, I'm working in in the style that I used to work when I was doing all things analog back in the '80s. And I was just doing really intense pencil renderings. I've kind of fallen in love with that again now that I've figured out how to replicate that digitally. <laughs> we, so, oh, yeah, digitally is so amazing. My computer is opening windows. I did not ask it to open. Uh, Have you played with perspective grids yet, Doc? With, uh, with no, because, because I cannot get it to work. Oh. Are you using a video paint as well? So, yeah, I've used it for years. Yeah. Yeah, because I used to be a Photoshop guy, and then when uh, back when it was Manga Studio Five, I got into this. And it's oh, like, yeah. okay, Photoshop's great; I can do so much with Photoshop. But when it comes to just drawing comics, nothing is better than CSP. No, no. So idea. this so, this was oh, this this was ta this was taking yeah. Ross's tap 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 for the leaves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then using impressionism, short brush strokes, unblended work oh, okay. for everything else. Yeah. And then you, and then using uh, Turner's approach to clouds. I dig that. Oh, that's Ooh. beautiful. Look at that glimmer on the water. So again, this is this is not no dab 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 here. Every leaf is painted, but they're painted quick and suggestively, and then blocks of color. And you have know, you ever yeah. tried to? Uh, have you tried to uh, experiment with like Monet's technique? Any? He was um, really doing amazing things with water. When uh. When I was reviewed by a, a big magazine here, I was called the Monet of the South. The so yes, South. is the answer. Um, hey, this, is you... a, this is a, this is a, this was painted on Bay Street in Beaufort, South Carolina, one morning, plein air. Oh, dude, dude, I'm in South Carolina. Right on. I'm down That's a terrible. Bit. This was my first uh, and only all palette knife painting. All of it was done with a knife. I just wanted to see what the hoo ha was about. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> uh, I did. I did this one. Um, there's a good, great painter on YouTube, Stuart Davis. Uh, he's a tonalist, and I was watching him paint. Oh, those big, clouds! These, yeah, he was painting big, towering clouds over these macro landscapes. And someone in his chat said, "Can you do that with acrylic?" And he said, "No." So I sent him this. I said, yes, the fuck you can. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he put in chat. Uh, you absolutely can. I've I've played with the other mediums, but acrylic is my favorite for paying in. And yep. if you are playing with yourself, you can learn to make acrylic look like watercolor or oil. Yep. But I love acrylic because it dries fast and it's friggin' durable, and I don't have to worry about ever ruining a painting. Exactly. <laughs> around um, the con. I started in I started in oil, <clears throat> and then when I found acrylics, I never looked back. 
because yeah. I don't want to move paint around. I want it to stay where I put it, let it dry, and then I can work layers. And yes. So that's, that's what this is. And there's a video on my fine art channel of painting this one, uh, which is one of Man, my favorites. The water looks so good. It, oh, look at that. Look at that. I really like the water on the previous one you had, though. Oh, let me. Oh, yeah, yeah that's look... that is Monet's technique: light against yeah. dark, dark against light. Let your uh, complementary yeah. colors be optically blended. Don't blend the strokes. Say so what? <laughs> that is gorgeous. So light against dark, dark against light is called passage. And then, okay. like, if you zoom in. And you look, you don't blend your colors. You let the human eye do the blending from a distance. Because, uh, yes. okay. you know, impressionism, you want to look at those from about six feet away. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. That was the first thing I ever painted. I was like, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, speaking of colors. Um, but, this, but, but this is, I'm sorry. I didn't, this is the... Uh, a Monet replica that I did, and it was the first time I started studying Monet. Right. So I painted 100 Monet replicas before I did my first original painting in that style. Yeah, and this is my most recent one. A hundred, boy. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. But um, share your screen for pops if you can. I got That's you. fine, Doc. It's just hold you guys so this is brand new stuff for the Steins comic that's, that I'm working on. It should be coming out in a couple months. We should be getting it to backers soon, but I thought you guys like to see this. Oh, some werewolf action. And then... Werewolves are becoming hot again. Like it's. Hey, Jim. <laughs> Jim, had I seen you out hey, there because Pops is asleep at the wheel, I would have shot you the link. But yeah, these two just but these two just oh, now don't worry, Pop shot him the link about four hours ago. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> but um yeah, these are brand new. They just came in from the my colorist, uh, Don, who's taking over. He's doing a really good job on the colors. Oh like yeah, Kirby's like, hey, now do an entire comic and that's you that. can't, oh, yeah, it play. cannot be done. <laughs> So, <laughs> that, would, that just means that would, uh, you, you realize that the <laughs> smallest <laughs> brush I use when I do those paintings is a one inch brush. Go grab a one inch brush and an 11 by 17 and get to work. Show me what you got. <laughs> What's up, Kirby? <laughs> you lie. You lie, old man. You can do that. You can no fucking <laughs> grace our 20. fucking eyes with Doc Blaylock's comic that's entirely painted. <laughs> No, sir. You, all you're you, fucking digital all now. Is, uh, all you need is 22 canvases that are like six by four. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, no, Bracey. No, no, he, he, he's, he's digital now. He's digital. It, so he can it, do it. it. Okay, first of all, Kirby, you cannot do, <clears throat> you can't paint the way I paint digitally. Maybe somebody can. I can't. We actually, yeah. I have to stand. Arm's length away. Let me turn on my camera. Here. Adapt and overcome. What the fuck? You, you <laughs> literally stand this far away from your canvas, holding your brush out here. None of right. this that we do drawing comics. You know, we're all... <laughs> these little lines. No, it's this. It's... Wah, 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 wah. It can't be done. It can. Adapt and overcome. There's, there's, just a, there's just a button in Painter that says, turn to freshness. <laughs> it's, <terrible. laughs> it's no button. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he, he can sit there and develop his own style and, and way to... I have worked on digital. for years just to get where I'm at right now, Kirby. And I know <laughs> that you think I suck. But I like where what? I'm at with my pencil work. So no, I'm not going to grab a big one inch brush and start slobbering ink all over. No, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Next, it's just the paint, paint the tool, dude. Just the paint. Dude. <laughs> paint the next fucking book. I saw a crazy. Uh, I saw a crazy digital mm. painting somebody did uh, many years ago now, uh, when digital was really first starting to take off. And this guy painted what looked like an oil painting to my eye, and he he claimed that he painted it with a mouse. Yeah, you know, he wasn't even using like a Wacom or a yeah. Cintiq or anything like that. 
I was like, holy crap, man. You would probably get a more you would probably get a more authentic impressionist look with a mouse than you would with a stylus. Yeah, those freaks of yeah, nature still exist was. out there. But they that, do. Yeah. I'm not yeah, saying do. Doc has to be one, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> but he he was that, a fucking marine corpsman, right? So what? A Navy corpsman for a Marine Corps squad. So and what? He's fucking talking about I can't do this. I can't do that. <laughs> it's this. Ah, <laughs> motherfucker. Listen, 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 what I am going to do, uh, when I when I finish here, it'll take a, about a week or two off, and then I start on uh, Pariah Sanctum of Hate. And I'm going to do a 16 by 20 landscape painting of the swamps with my golem in it. Like, he looks like Man-Thing. <clears throat> and it'll be a painting, and I will paint it in impressionism. Beautiful, beautiful. And what? Look That's gonna to prove that. that I'm right. You should do the whole <laughs> fucking comic that way. <laughs> you were wrong. What? So sit there in your wrongness and be wrong. <laughs> I so love for the last, not <laughs> you will prove me <laughs> right. Trying to wrong. Yeah, he's gonna prove me right. What? He's gonna look good. Uh, Would yeah, you stop interrupting then, me while Kirby's I'm be interrupting up. you? <laughs> yeah. Kirby's gonna be able to poke at you when you accomplish it too. He's gonna be able to. What the hell? <laughs> Kirby Kirby's style is actually very painterly. When he's drawing, he's 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 painting, and then he does he does. Re, correct me if I'm wrong, Kirby. But then you start doing reduction, uh, yep. deduct, reductive yep. drawing. Yeah, which is a the... great approach. I like it. Right, I lost the ability to um do uh what's it? I don't know how to say it. Continual lines or what what is it? Uh just doing the long lines. Yeah. You can't draw a line any a long straight line anymore? No, nah, it's uh got too much uh nerve damage. Uh so, excuse uh, me, Marine. Improvise, adapt, overcome. <laughs> I did. So that's why my style. Well, I can't. I can't Aww. make a comic. Aww. I can't do this. <laughs> I figured. It out. That's fine. Nope. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to take a year off drawing uh, because I. You see how I can't put my fingers together? I got nerve damage in my drawing hand, and uh, I had to. Reteach myself how to draw. I still can't sign my name properly. It looks funky. Right. But uh, I taught myself how to draw again by just inking over other people for uh, for about a year. I don't. Those last going? three fingers, I I don't have any feeling. No, those uh, last three fingers. I had nerve damage. Parts of my arm. arm, and it uh it caused it caused the muscles in my hand to wither. I didn't even realize it was going on. Uh, and then yeah. one day I realized I put my fingers together, and I was like. Man, my my hand looks like a zombie hand compared to my other hand. I went to the doctor. Was like, oh yeah, you've got exactly, atrophy yeah. and serious nerve damage, and they had to go in and uh, move that nerve to another place because apparently all these years of like resting my arm on a table drawing damaged that particular nerve. It'll do it. <clears throat> hey, let me let me show you guys something real quick. In 2017, I was on my bike and a lady backed out in front of me in a parking lot. And I had to dump the bike, and uh, I broke my elbow on my right arm and three pla- no two places on my elbow and three places on my wrist <clears throat> and uh so let me do this real quick so i did this over on my fine heart channel we'll just show a minute of this yeah we all can't be a freak like frank frazetta who gets a stroke can't draw with his right hand just starts painting and drawing as well as he ever did <laughs> so here we yeah. go here we go. I cut. I cut the sound out. So let's get right into the painting part. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to get a copyright strike on yourself by yourself. <laughs> uh, the that audio, would be horrible. The, the, the audio just sucks. So this is left-handed painting. <laughs> yes, and but I've seen that hey, happen on. I'm left-handed. What are you trying to say? <laughs> my my thesis was that to my art students, I always tell them it's not what you can do with your hands; it's what you're able to see. And if you can mm. see art, you can do art. So I decided I'd put my money where my mouth was because my students were giving me shit for not painting with my left hand yeah. while my while my right hand was broke. 
So I did a tonalist piece because I was scared to try anything else. Mm. <laughs> Your impression is Picasso. <laughs> So oh, we'll don't skip, don't get me started on Picasso. That's splattery shit. That's we'll, not art. We'll, we'll skip forward a little bit here. <gasps> You're using both hands, though. I had a second. I'm supposed to use one. You already broke yeah, the rules. Yeah, I, I, I'm doing the wipe offs with my right hand. But in fairness, when I'm painting that way in that style with my right hand, I do the wipes with my left hand. So it's all right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's skip, that's impressive. I can ahead, see it coming ahead, together. Skip ahead a little bit. And then uh <laughs> because the world is a hateful place, one of my uh one of my students bought this one from me. Yeah. So they would always, they, they would they would always have a piece where they could go, look, I was better than my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking bad. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> hateful fucker. Oh, you sure you're doing a little bit with Texas Dave. Got the show off today at 3.30. There you go. And uh, it's all about that. Let's take a quick look at what Kirby's doing before we... Yeah. yeah. Does that character look familiar to anybody? Because I know That's who that is. Dillard. That is John Dillard. No, so John. listen, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> Um, we're, we're backstage hanging out and Kirby's got to design some goons uh, and he needs some facial expressions. John Dillard <laughs> sat back there like a prima donna model and made all these facial expressions for him and they got screenshots. It was awesome. <laughs> he does make a good goon, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, This character's going to be going to be fucking awesome. I'm, I'm mixing Dillard's Personality and mannerisms, everything I know about him. With, okay, uh, but you got to call him Don Gillard. Silver. You, no, you got to call him Ryan. Don Gillard. He, uh, but listen, it, it gets worse. Kirby was all kinds of racist. He said, Yeah, I need a Mexican goon. I need a, <laughs> what did you say? What else did you need? <laughs> one, He's racist. Guy, one big black He's guy. He's trying to be inclusive. Mexicans, yeah. A white guy uh, with long hair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. he's just <laughs> calling out every stereotype yeah. there is. Yeah. They, just they all be serve a, a purpose. Uh -oh. My. The white guy with long hair has been dry a bunch of times. It's nothing new. All right, <laughs> so let's take it around the room. James. Hey. Tell, tell people where they can find you, sir. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on X or Twitter, however you want to call it. And you find me at www.thevonsteins.com. Fantastic. Mr. Bracey, where can people find you, sir? You find me on X at uh, Bracey452. And uh, DeviantArt is where I have my gallery under the name Bracey100. And right. pretty much any place you see uh, this logo, that's probably me. That is uh, my own personal hand-drawn smiley face from my hero, Mr. Happy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this guy because he wraps it up for us. So let's uh, let's talk to Doran. Doran, where hey. can people find you, sir? You can find me at whitefirecomics.com. That's my main 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 home. Uh, or you can find me on Twitter and Facebook as well, if you want. But whitefirecomics.com is the best place. All right, fantastic. And Kirby, where can people find your elusive ass? <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll be around. I'll be around where Doc is around. I'll be around where. Dillard's around. Yeah. <laughs> we run in packs. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. And uh, by the way, I have a campaign live on Fun My Comic called A Damn Dirty Thing. I would greatly appreciate you backing at any level you can. Our cheapest product is $4 for the digital PDF or $4 for the uh, digital uh, novella. So you can afford it. Go give me some love. Oh, I forgot to do this. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm Doc Blaylock. You can find me on the YouTubes, Doc Blaylock. I'm the only one there. Uh, you can find me on the Twixt at Doc Blaylock 8404. And then lastly, let's come to this guy here. Q, where can we let people find you? You can always find me here and find us here in the Madness Comic Network on YouTube. 
and Roku. <laughs> Take it away, Pops. a creature in the swamps. It lives to destroy. The beast they call Hogzilla. After his latest get rich scheme goes sideways, Gary Duba, the quintessential Florida man, ends up with a stash of somebody's high-end memorabilia. His gal Crystal is on probation and preparing for the fight of her life, squaring off against Australia's queen of combat. Delilah's got her back in training, staying off rich foods and the nose candy. Meanwhile, Gary and his best friend Floyd have been hired to wrangle a massive, abnormally aggressive feral hog that's terrorizing the swamp and wrecking Gary's old neighborhood. Can they bag the elusive monster swine without destroying the Sunshine State? Reserve your copy of Florida Man vs. Hogzilla at FloridaManComics.com. We're bringing back funny books, y'all. How do you end this thing? How do you put the where there was the brakes on this bus? I forgot. Jazz hands. Jazz hands are done.